Hey students, welcome to yet another wonderful session. So in today's session, we are going to be talking about operations on decimals. It's a very interesting but a very simple topic. And I hope everybody has joined the Telegram channel. If you haven't joined, let me tell you, so many things we share over there like the session PDFs, some interesting quizzes, Sunday facts, homework questions, revision questions, and of course, session updates as well. If you haven't joined it, please do join it. The link is there in the description. For now, let's get started with our topic. So first we'll be talking about interconversion of rupee and pesa. So for converting from rupees to pesa, we simply multiply by 100 and from pesa to rupee, we divide by 100. Just remember one simple thing, from whenever we go from bigger to smaller units, we multiply. Whenever we go from smaller to bigger units, we have to divide. Now in a similar manner, if I talk about interconversion of length units, so from kilometer to meter, we multiply by 1000, meter to centimeter, you multiply by 100, centimeter to millimeter, you multiply by 10. Similarly, when you're going from millimeter to centimeter, you have to divide by 10, centimeter to meter, you have to divide by 100, meter to kilometer, divide by 1000. Just remember that basic funda that from bigger to smaller units, you have to multiply, smaller to bigger, you have to divide. Let's talk about the weight units now. So from ton to kilogram, you multiply by 1000, kilogram to gram, we multiply by 1000, and gram to milligram, we multiply by 10. Similarly, milligram to gram, we divide by 10, gram to kilogram, we divide by 1000, kilogram to ton, we divide by 1000. It's a very simple one. Now, keeping all this in mind, we can solve questions based on that as well. For now, let's move ahead. Let's see how multiplication of decimals takes place. So multiplication of decimal numbers in case of whole numbers, right? with whole numbers. So like we have 2.35, we have to multiply this with the whole number 7. Forget the decimal point first of all, just do normal multiplication like you normally do. So you will get 1645. Now comes the important part, how to put the decimal. So after in this number, we have got two digits after the decimal point. So in the answer, we will put the decimal after the two digits, starting from the right, we will put it. That's going to be 16.45. It's very simple. Now let's take another example wherein we will be multiplying two decimal numbers like we have got 1.44 and 1.2. Forget the decimal for now, just do normal multiplication. You would get 1728. Now how to put the decimal? In this number we have got two digits after the decimal point and here only one digit after the decimal point in all three. So I'll put the decimal after three digits starting from the nine, right. That's going to be 1.728. That would be the answer. It's pretty simple, right? So that's how we do the multiplication of of two decimal numbers. Now, what if I have to multiply a decimal number with 10, 100, and 1000? I'll pick up only one same example for all of them. Like we have got 3.4976. I have to multiply that with 10. So whenever we are multiplying, we shift towards right. Remember this thing. Since there is only one zero here, I'll shift one place towards right. That's going to be 34.976. The same number here, I'm multiplying with 100. This time there are two zeros. I'll shift two places towards the right in that case. That's going to be 349.76. Similarly, if I have 1,000, three zeros are there, we will shift three places towards the right. That's going to be 3,497.6. Very simple one, right? That's how you can multiply that. No need to do long division. I mean, um, no need to do the actual method. You can simply shift the decimals. All right, so this was about the multiplication of decimals. Now let's move ahead. Let's talk about how division of decimals take place. Let's suppose we have to divide this decimal number with a whole number. We have this example, 4.8 divided by 4. Simply, what we do, we generally change the division symbol to multiplication and we flip the number that is written after that. That's going to be 1 by 4. So 4.8, I can write this as 48 by 10 because you remove the decimal, there is one digit after the decimal point. That's why we're writing 10 over here. Now simply, this is 4 times 1, 4 times 1, 4 times 2. I've got 12 by 10 now. Basically, I'm dividing 12 with 10. There is only one zero in the denominator. So I'll put the decimal after one digit starting from the right. That's going to be 1.2. In 12 starting from right, I'll put decimal here. 1.2 would be the answer. Simple. Now, what if we have to do division of decimal number with another decimal number? Like we have 5.76 and 0 0.24. So here when I'm dividing that, that's pretty simple. After the decimal point, this has got two digits. This also has got two digits. When after the decimal point, the number of digits are same, decimal will be removed. It's a simple trick that you can remember. But number of digits after the decimal point in both of them have to be same. There is a reason to it because it's 5.76, that's 0 0.24. Once you remove the decimal, we will write 100 in the denominator. Once you remove the decimal from here, you will write 100 in the numerator. So this gets cancelled out. That's why we have 576 upon 24. Now we simply cancel this out, you get 24 at the end. Simple one, right? 
Now in a similar manner, let's see how division by 10, 100 and 1000 takes place. I'm using the same number every time. We've got 349.76. Let's say I have to divide this by 10. Since this time division is taking place, in multiplication we move right to the right. Here we move to the left. Since there is only one zero, we will move one place towards the left. That's going to be 34.976. Similarly, the number is same. I'm dividing with 100. Two zeros this time. So we will be moving two places towards the left. That's going to be 3.4976. In the next example, we have got 1000 here. Three zeros are there. So we'll be shifting three places towards the left. That means the decimal will come before three over here. That's going to be 0 0.34976. Isn't that pretty simple? We don't have to do long division method, nothing. Just using this simple thing, we can just shift the decimals and get the answer. All right, so that's it from my end. Now there's a question that you can try out so that you can check your understanding as well. John bought 5.5 meter of cloth for rupees 275. The cost price per meter is. Four options you can see on the screen. Try this out and let us know if the correct option in the comment section below. And if you have any doubts, you can post your doubts in the comment section if in case of any confusion. And don't worry, we have got you covered. And please hit the like button if you feel that these sessions are actually useful. Share in your school groups with your friends as well. And do subscribe the channel if you haven't yet. And I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.